Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Let's get back to work on the Fokker D7. Now before we begin doing that glue up, because yeah, that glue up is not going to be a fun glue up. Uh, I was, I kind of thought they wanted to use epoxy. They want to use thick CA, so thick CA it'll be. Because it's going to be a whole heck of a lot easier and quicker to go ahead and work with some thick CA. Now I do have everything ready to glue up. You can kind of see it right about there, both sides. And the other side where I had to go ahead and try to make it so that I had because you guys saw in the first part of this I pretty much did mechanical drawing uh, the way it's all set up on the blueprints now that was just for the one on the left side the one on the right side I had to go ahead and so my biggest concern even with printing at home was gonna be it was the exact size Luckily for me, our copying machine or our scanner at work does do it in the exact same size that it was. So I was able to go ahead and do it, even with my little teeny uh, notifications on, on the datum measurements and uh, pretty much everything else. Uh, so that worked out nice. Now when I went ahead and reprinted it back out, I had to fight with this. I could not get it to work at my home printer because it would not allow it to print out at full size. Even try doing a poster size, it still wouldn't be full size. So once again, I had to go back to work and I was able to get it to work so that they were the same size, which benefited me really well. So I was able to bring that stuff home and I've got two of those things taped together with the aluminum side panel taped to the top of it so that I can go ahead and redraw all the lines that needed to be set up so that when glue up time comes everything will be in proper order in the right location. So let me go ahead take you guys off the stand give you a quick little overhead view on it and then from there on out it's going to be let the gluing begin. Okay this is kind of what you saw in the last video right at the very end. This one here is all ready to glue up. Now this side was the hard part as you can see I thought I cut this one out so that it would have the, uh, the primer side up. I was wrong. So but that's no big deal because all this stuff when it gets sprayed up anyway it's still going to get a coat of primer. I'm going to come in I'm going to seal the wood with the nitrate dope that I'll be using for the fabric and the wood on the plane as well. So as soon as these things get glued up, they'll just be thrown off to the side until I start getting the plane ready to cover. Then I'll take care of this. And then when it comes time to spray the plane, that's when I'll be spraying this. So the biggest problem I had was just trying to go ahead and use this to go ahead and make my lines going across. Cause you can see it's all backwards. Um, so I was able to make some of this work uh, in other cases, it was going to be difficult. See down here, I was able to do this where the marks were down here, no marks up here. So I had to just make measurements across and you know, everything's all good. So I'm not too concerned about this. Uh, this piece I had to move twice because I put it in the wrong spot once and then I went ahead and moved it and then put it in the wrong spot twice. Focus. All right, sorry about that little focus in, focus out stuff. Everything got fuzzy for a second there. All right, so what I had done is this, I put it up a little bit too high, so then I had to kind of split the difference and put it in just, just from the measurements off the plans. Um, now everything's in the proper location. So let me go ahead. I will start getting these things glued up. Once again, it's going to be aluminum first, and then we'll start putting the, the, the balsa on second. The one thing is that I haven't made a final decision on this yet and I'm going to have to do it before I glue the little teeny louvers on is do I want to undercut these things so that it looks like a real louver coming out or do I just want to leave it the way that it is right now. Um, I'm hedging right now for leaving it the way it is just for ease of use but I'm going to call a couple friends and see uh, what their suggestion is and if I get enough friends saying hey we want you to kind of undercut them a little bit then I'll go ahead and do it. So let me go ahead and I'll at least get the aluminum glued on today because we're getting later on in the day. So I'll at least get the aluminum glued into place 
and then I'm going to bring you back to take a look at that and then uh, hopefully by that point in time I'll have a decision on what I want to do to the louvers. Hey we're outside today and guess what it's getting late in the day so I'm going to have more bright light behind me than in front of me so we should have fun on this one. First I went flying this morning I uh, took the big orange tailor craft out first flight dead stick because apparently the problem that I had last year I never fixed it that's how we do things uh, second flight just a little tweak on the carb and everything was fine so it was just a matter of just a quick little adjustment on the top end a little too lean all right the big issue was the chin cowl and here it is all trimmed it took me a little bit longer than I wanted it to but it's got to get done the way it got done you're going to do a lot of testing yourself uh, the instructions pretty much tell you to go ahead and beat your head against the wall not really but that's kind of was sort of what you think it's saying um, just take your time sit back kind of figure it out uh, if there's any questions go ahead and ask me down below in the the, uh, the comment section because this was uh, this was interesting all right now what they wanted you to do on the bottom is they wanted you to have these little angled little standoffs and that's what the screws are going to go up in front now there's been people that have said hey just glue the whole thing into position personally myself I wanted to be able to take it off don't really know why but I wanted to be able to take it off so what I did was I took my one of my little grindy tools a little die grinder and just started grinding on the piece of uh, pine that they gave you I use spruce I just like spruce a little better and I've got plenty of it so what I did is I came in and ground it and it's pretty much about a 45 degree see if I can get that so you can see it and not be too blasted out by the background it's pretty much a 45 degree 45 degree so that's why we get the little diamond shape on the bottom and that fits very nicely so then all you had to do is just come in mark it so I just kind of made little measurement marks on the side on the cowling itself and you can't see it um, but I just ran a bead of tape across the top of it and then at that point uh, just kind of drill the holes about where they should be and everything worked out nice so now when this thing goes on you do have to cut the little C shapes out back and that's just for the landing gear wire so let's get this installed all right I happened to drop one of the screws on the ground and I have no idea where it is so I'll just grab another one so anyway so now this is put into place so let me go ahead and take you guys off the stand and I want to kind of show you what we're going to work on here. All right, these little pieces, these little teeny cheeks, they stand out a little bit. This is where I'm going to be running a screw through. You know, even though when it comes time to take the cowling off, you're going to go ahead and pretty much either take this piece off I figure the way it's going to come off anyway, I'll probably be taking this off and taking these bolts out here, which are going to come through the little side panels that are sitting right over there. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to put another screw on this side just to go ahead and pull these little teeny cheeks in on both sides. So just so it'll tidy it up a little bit. Now let me see if I can get this thing to kind of sit on its side just so we can get a little bit of a look on what we have to do with the first little, uh, with one of the uh, aluminum side panels. All right, now when these things go on, these are little things I'm going to have to do to get these things all properly set up. Because it's going to have to drop down lower. And I want to say it's going to come in right about like that and possibly like this. I'm not 100% sure on the bottom because they want the top to show. So then guaranteed what I'm going to have to do is trim this down a little bit over here because there's a little bit of overlap and this is why I left this little this little cheek piece here I left that just so that it's going to be a little bit longer and it's better to have to cut something off than to try to add something back on all right so we are pretty good where this is going to sit here I'm going to have to trim off more than I thought I was going to have to so I'll have to get that done before it comes time to get these things screwed into place I'm going to make little marks out where the landing gear is coming through so I can put little teeny, little teeny U grinds in there for this. The rear I don't have to worry about because it, it bends out earlier than it should, but that's just the way the gear was bent. So I'll go ahead, so I'll make a mark on this one where I'm going to have to grind that one back a little bit. All right, so the first little U is going to go right about in here, and I don't know how much I'm going to have to grind that out. I'll just take my time. But at least we've got a marker there so that's how it gets started with this one because we're pretty good up here in the top it's only got to come down a little teeny bit 
So we can get that ground. This is going to have to be cut back at least to here and then probably in here. So I'll just have to come in and make a better sweeping mark probably in this area right here. And I'll grind about back to that little spot right there. All right, I just used a couple little files. I do have some files that are designed for uh, chainsaws. And they work very nicely for some of these small little uh, sections. You're going to have to go ahead and file out. So this, because it's real thin aluminum, it sands down quickly. So then we come back in and tentatively get everything lined up. We're sitting over that spot quite well. Let me just go ahead and get this little piece ground out right here and then we'll see how it sits in place. All right, let's try this again and see how long, how, see how well it's gonna fit. Fits a little better, still a little bit more grinding. Um, yeah, not 100% happy the way this thing fits on here, but I'm gonna have to do some tweaking on it. Um, we're not too bad though. The way it's sitting right here, we're pretty good here. This is, this is okay. We're good up in here. This is where the indicator is on where it slopes down. Um, nothing will be, uh, this piece will not be attached to the front part here, but as you can see, there's a couple bolt holes behind it. So there'll be holes drilled through here uh, so that these can pass down through it. So you don't have to take this off and you take the cowling off. I had to bring it back inside because that light in the background was driving me crazy. And right now it doesn't take me too long to do that. It's been a hot day outside. Anyway, uh, I do have the chin cowling on it. Um, they say don't th even think about putting, I guess, thinking about putting those little cheeks on before you get it covered, um, which I can kind of see their point. But then on the other hand, I kind of want to have the holes put in place before I cover it. I may just listen to them. And the reason why is because once I get everything covered, I may have to make adjustments to a lot of things. And the last thing I need to do is if I grind too much or do too much to those little cheeks, uh, to the aluminum side panels, and realize that I can't go back in time again. Let's just call the aluminum panels done because they are all glued together. I'm just gonna have to do that little bit of tweaking and then uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and wait and finalize that most likely before it gets painted, which would be the wisest thing to do. Um, so once the plane is covered, before I go ahead and shoot any primer or anything on it, because I found out with some of the spray paints that I use, because I use some of the Krylon, this stuff was okay, the Duel. It worked pretty good. And if you're ready for this one, the dual, this stuff here, the Supermax all-in-one, don't ever use this to spray anything with nitrate dope on it. Because what it did is even when the paint dried, because they said, you know, wait X amount of days, I even let this stuff dry for a week and as soon as you spray the next coat on, this was on the orange plane, it started lifting up the paint, yes. Which made for a wonderful spray job. What I do, and this is me, if you're, if you're in America and you have one of these companies called Ace Hardware, this is Krylon's paint made for them. It's the old school paint that we can't really seem to buy, but you can get it from the hardware store. So this is the paint I've been spraying on the planes. Zero issues, period. So the stuff does work good. And it's it's the, the price itself is very compatible with everything else. But just the fact that when you spray it, it doesn't lift. So with that part done, we're getting one step closer to getting this thing covered. So the only thing I have left to do is go over the fuselage, make sure that everything is sitting pretty, um, because I do have to do some filler on it, which you guys will probably see post filling sanding to go ahead and put the fabric on it. I still have a couple little tweaks to do on the bottom wing, which you guys will see. I have to cover the, the, the center section on it um, and that's just a matter of just because I do have this, the, the planking. I'll just get some, it's a, like an eighth inch planking. I've already got it. I just got to cut it and glue it into place and do the final sand on that. There's a couple rib caps on the bottom wing that I'm going to go ahead and replace. And it's on the bottom. Do I have to really replace it? No. Will I replace it? Yes. 
because it's very easy to do and, and it's, so it's not going to take that much time at all. So then after that's all taken care of and I get the, the fuselage, I'll do the once over on that and this is before I cover it. Uh, with the fuselage, get that thing all prepped, ready to cover, both wings prepped and ready to cover. We will be putting the whole plane back together again just to get make sure that everything is square and I'm happy with it. So anything I have to do to correct it will have to be done before the covering goes on. So if any of you guys have any questions about those little aluminum side panels, um, please don't hesitate to comment in the section below and ask me because it was a lot more than I thought it was going to be. But once you get it done, you realize it's not as bad as you think it's going to be. It's just going to take a lot of time. So let's go ahead. Let's call this a video and I'll see you guys next time. I'll back down in the shop.